We continue our lecture on natural language processing. Today's lecture is on noisy channel modeling, it is used in natural language processing and uh, a very important technique called argmax computation. Let us proceed. Now, we have mentioned many times that there are two views of natural language processing and there are um, associated challenges. The classical view and the statistical machine learning point of view. In classical view, knowledge and rules are used which are created by human beings, lexicographers, linguists, they capture the regularities of a language and they introduce rules which are used by the machine. In statistical machine learning view, what happens is that the data is processed by the machine and it generates the rules through machine learning techniques. It also generates the probability values. In the last class, we had this sentence labeling problem in the form of parsing. Out of all the sequence labeling tasks, we have said the parsing is one situation where the labeling problem is not so obvious. So, the sentence is shown here as come July and the IIT campus is abuzz with new and returning students. So, this whole sentence has been given a bracketed structure which in the last class we saw is equivalent to a tree. So, a two dimensional tree is equivalent to a one dimensional bracketed structure of a sentence where the brackets capture the trees and the subtrees. So, the IIT campus for example, IIT and campus they together form a unit, then the is a determiner coming before IIT campus. So, the IIT campus these three together form a noun phrase. So, you can see that there is this NP node which has the children as the IIT and campus. So, these three units together form the NP tree. So, the whole structure the whole structure is actually a tree with uh, subtrees within tree and therefore, this becomes a completely uh, sequence labeled data. Proceeding, we uh, now introduce modeling through the noisy channel argmax based computation. So, the question we are asking is we understand natural language data is in the form of raw text and on top of that we produce labels. Okay. So, it could be part of speech tag labels, named entity labels or parse trees which are bracket structures. So, the question now is how do we produce these labels? These labels are produced by a technique which is mentioned in the slide modeling through the noisy channel argmax based computation. So, we will illustrate this technique by means of five problems in natural language processing. The picture here shows the foundation of the noisy channel model. The problem formulation is based on the noisy channel model idea which is borrowed from speech. It dates back to 1960s and the noisy channel was a metaphor for any computation where the input had to be transformed into an output and there were noise coming at every stage of processing. So, an example of that would be uh, automatic speech recognition where the speech signal having been heard is converted to a piece of text okay, in, in the form of written form. So, a speech signal converted to written text form. So, this is a transformation which happens over a noisy channel because on the way from speech signal to text there can be different sources of error 
and this is modeled, modeled by the noisy channel. So, this, met, uh, this uh, technique came from probability and speech, this has been adapted to natural language processing and we will see very soon how the technique comes to great use in natural language processing problems. If you look at the figure here, this is the noisy channel. On the input side of the channel, there is a uh, sequence w 1, w n minus 1 up to w 1, w n, w n minus 1 up to w 1. This is a sequence which becomes another sequence t m, t m minus 1, t 1. So, entities w 1 to w n go over the noisy channel and become another set of entities t 1, t 2 up to t m. So, sequence w is transformed into the sequence t. Now, here one could think of finding the best possible w star given t or one could find out best possible t star given w. Okay. We will make this little more precise, but please note the use of a function here called argmax. Let us uh, understand this argmax function. I will now write about argmax computation. So, let us say we have y equal to f x. What is the difference between y star equal to max of y is equal to max of f x. Okay. So, this is equal to f star x equal to y star. So, f star x equal to y star equal to max of y is equal to max of f x. So, this corresponds to the maximum value of y equal to f x. Now, if we compare this with arg max, so compare max with arg max. Now, we will write x star equal to arg max f x over all x. So, it means that find out that value of x, find that x which maximizes f x. Okay. So, while comparing max with arg max, we uh, find that value x star which maximizes the f x value. So, the thing to note is that in both cases, in both max and uh, arg max, in both max and arg max, we maximize f x. So, in both max and arg max, we maximize f x, okay. but in max, we take f in arg max, we take x. Okay. Is it clear? So, both max and arg max, what is maximized is f x. There is no change with respect to that. Both arg max and max concentrate on maximizing f x. Max takes the f value, arg max takes the x value. Okay. So, find out that value of x for which f x is maximum and return that. So, that is the meaning of arg max, whereas max is maximize f x and return f. Okay, that is the difference. So, arg max computation is central to many of the things we will discuss now. We see the transparencies and uh, in this case, we are mentioning Bayesian decision theory. So, arg max computation, noisy channel modeling, all these are essentially statistical processes for doing a task and the heart of this is Bayesian decision theory. So, Bayes theorem is a very well known theorem of probability. It says that 
given the random variables a and b probability of a conditioned on b that is probability of a given b is equal to probability of a into probability of b given a divided by probability of b. So, this is the Bayesian theorem and it is a very very celebrated theorem due to Bayes who was a 17th or 18th century uh, mathematician and the this very simple formula has found lot of application in decision theory. Now, this can this, uh, this theorem can be very easily proved if you take P B on this side, then you have P B into P A given B equal to P A into P B given A. Okay. So, is this true? This is true because the left hand side now becomes P A dot B, P A and B and the right hand side is also P A and B or P B and A. Now, since and is commutative P A, A and B is equal to P B and A and therefore, this theorem is true. So, proof of this theorem is very very simple you just have to use the fact that P B into P A given B is nothing but P B and A and this side is P A and B. Okay. So, this is a base theorem now there are some terms which are used in discussing Bayes theorem. P A given B is called the posterior probability. Okay. So, how does the probability of a change given uh, the knowledge of B? So, you can contrast this posterior probability with the prior probability. P A is the prior probability, P A given B is the posterior probability. So, we are given the prior probability of A. Now, the knowledge of B has arrived. So, how does the probability of A change? So, this is modeled by probability of A given B. This posterior probability, this is prior probability as I have already mentioned and probability of B given A is the is called the likelihood probability. How likely it is that B occurs given A? Now, uh, one might wonder as to what difference it makes whether we work with P A given B or P B given A. right? So, this is a very valid question should we work with P A given B or P B given A. Now, this is a very very valid question we will see that when we take up a particular problem that decides which probability we should work with, which probability is better to work with, which is more convenient. Is it P A given B or P B given A? We will take some examples. Now, Bayes theorem derivation it has been already mentioned that P A and B is equal to P B and A and from that the theorem follows. Now, we would like to understand when and why to apply Bayes theorem, which is equivalent to asking should we work with P A given B or P B given A. Here is an example I describe. This example is from Tom Mitchell's celebrated book Machine Learning 1997. Uh, this is the example. It is known that in a population 1 in 50,000 has meningitis. Meningitis is a disease of the brain sometimes very, very fatal and 1 in 20 has stiff neck. Okay. So, we know that 1 in 50,000 has meningitis that is a rare phenomenon whereas, stiff neck is, is a much more frequent occurrence and therefore, 1 in 20 has stiff neck. It is also observed that 50 percent of the meningitis patients also have stiff neck. Okay. So, this is the case that in case of meningitis about half the uh, patients suffer from stiff neck. A doctor observes that a patient has stiff neck. What is the probability that the patient has meningitis? Okay. So, we have this situation here a patient has come with stiff neck and we would like to see what the probability is of the patient having meningitis. So, 
the answer to that is obtained by the a probabilistic technique. We need to find out probability of meningitis given S that is stiff neck. So, probability of meningitis given the stiff neck M and S are symbols for the random variables standing for having meningitis and having stiff neck respectively. So, we will apply Bayes rule, but we will keep in mind as to why we are applying this Bayes rule. Could we not have uh, worked directly with something which computes P m given S directly? We would like to apply Bayes rule. Now, P m given S is nothing but P m the prior probability of meningitis into probability of stiff neck given meningitis divided by probability of stiff neck. Okay. So, first answer to our question as to why we should apply Bayes rule is this fact that uh, as the problem has specified, as the problem has specified, we are given the probability of meningitis. We also see in the problem the probability of stiff neck given meningitis and the probability of stiff neck. All these are coming directly from the problem description. So, P m prior probability of meningitis, P s given m likelihood of stiff neck given meningitis, P s probability of stiff neck. So, all these values are known to us. So, P m is 1 by 50,000 which is the prior probability. We said that 1 in 20 have stiff neck therefore, pro probability of stiff neck is 1 in 20, 1 by 20 and the uh, likelihood of probability of stiff neck given meningitis is 50 percent which is 0 0.5. Okay. So, from this we can very easily compute the value of P m given s, P m given s is equal to P m into P s given m divided by P s. So, 1 by 50,000 into 0 0.5 divided by 1 by 20 which comes out to be equal to 1 by 5000. So, there is 1 in 5000 chance that the person has meningitis. So, from this it is easy to deduce that probability of meningitis given stiff neck is much much less than probability of not meningitis given stiff neck. Okay. So, if you compare these two probabilities, probability of meningitis given stiff neck and probability of not meningitis given stiff neck, we find that the probability of meningitis given stiff neck is much much smaller 1 by 5000 and hence meningitis is not likely. Okay. So, we should very carefully understand this problem. There are many important things which are shown by this example. Okay. First thing that is shown is that we look at this last line of the discussion P m given s much much less than P not m given s. Okay. So, this is helping us to make a decision whether the patient has meningitis or not. Okay. So, this point is to be appreciated here. Our decision is purely a quantitative decision. The decision is obtained from comparing probability of m given s with probability of not m given s. Okay. So, our decision was a two way decision. We wanted to uh, know a patient arriving with stiff neck does the patient have meningitis or not. Okay. So, there are two way there is a two way decision making process no meningitis yes meningitis okay. and the conditioning variable that is given is stiff neck. Now, we find the probability of meningitis given stiff neck from all the given data as specified in the problem and we find that this probability is less than the probability of non meningitis given stiff neck. Okay. So, since this probability is less therefore, the other probability influences our decision. We say that it is very unlikely that the patient does not have meningitis with high probability. So, notice the way the decision is being made. The decision is made based on comparing two probability values and when the probability values have been computed, we are in a position where we can say probabilistically speaking or there is very good evidence that the patient does not have meningitis. So, this is the heart of Bayesian decision theory. Bayesian decision theory says 
compare two probabilities or uh, compare a set of probabilities of the values of a random variable and pick up that particular uh, random variable as the decision or pick up that particular value as the decision whose probability is the highest. Okay. So, we write down this Bayesian decision theory principle. So, Bayesian decision theory principle says that decide in favor of that value of a random variable which is the highest among other values of the variable. Okay. So, this is the principle. There is a random variable, it has many values. If a particular value decide in favor of that value of random variable, which is the highest among other values of the variable probabilistically. Let me add that here probabilistically. Okay. So, choose that value as the decision whose probability is the highest. So, let me write that sentence also a very neat statement. Choose that value as the decision whose probability is the highest. Okay. This is the essence of Bayesian decision theory. Choose that value as the decision whose probability is the highest. Okay. So, we go back to the slide and see that we have made a decision with respect to the patient having meningitis or not. And what we have made use of is the prior probability of meningitis which is very small 1 by 50,000. The probability of stiff neck have when meningitis is present this is the likelihood probability this is 0 0.5 and probability of stick neck, stiff neck which is 1 in 20 and all this gives us this value 1 by 5000 and this tilts the probability balance in favor of no meningitis. Now, we take up some issues. We could have found out probability of meningitis given stiff neck as a ratio of frequencies. Okay. Essentially, what we do is that we find out the number of people having stiff neck and then we find out out of those patients having stiff neck, how many have meningitis. So, joint occurrence of meningitis and stiff neck, we compute that number or observe that number divided by the number of people having stiff neck. Okay. So, number of people having both meningitis and stiff neck divided by number of people having stiff neck. So, this whole ratio gives us the probability of meningitis given stiff neck. So, now we ask uh, which is more reliable to compute probability of stiff neck given meningitis or probability of meningitis given stiff neck. Which evidence is more sparse probability of stiff neck given meningitis or probability of meningitis given stiff neck. Okay. So, this means what evidence is larger in number okay. Okay. because the larger the number the more confidence we have in our observation. And finally, the test of significance the counts are always on a sample of population which probability count has sufficient statistics or uh, the point being made is that when we compute these probabilities we compute this probability is based on a population a sample of the population. So, what is our confidence in saying that this probability holds over the whole general population okay, that is the point. So, this is the test of significance. When we discuss these questions there is a reason why we have been working with Bayesian theorem and we are uh, working with the probability of P s given m 
and not P m given s. So, P s given m is a smaller sized population. Okay. We have to observe a smaller number of uh, cases, okay. because meningitis itself is uh, rare about 1 in 50,000 get this disease. So, you take we take this small population and from this population find out how many have stiff neck. So, this is not the same as computing P m given s. In for P m given s, we have to take that population which has stiff neck and amongst them find those which have meningitis. Okay. So, this is a much much uh, larger sample, we have to take a much larger group of people, because stiff neck is much more common than uh, meningitis itself. But given that a person has meningitis, okay, that makes our sample a very definite set and in that we observe the occurrence of stiff neck. Okay. And therefore, this probability at least intuitively seems to be easier to compute and one can have more confidence in it. Okay. If we talk to medical professionals or doctors, they would place their uh, bets more on computing P s given m rather than P m given s. Okay. And if we apply the Bayes theorem, we also have the advantage of working with the P m value namely the prior probability of meningitis. Okay. So, uh, I spent so much time discussing this example mainly to bring home the following point. The point is this, when we apply statistical technique, noisy channel model, arg max computation etcetera, we have to be very sure about which probability direction we are more comfortable or more confident of working with. Okay. So, is it P A given B or P B given A, which has better uh, confidence in their values okay. and which is easier to working with, which is easier to compute. Now, just a point about the issue of significance, we were talking about that. Now, since P M given S, P M given A S is uh, is not such a reliable parameter when computed directly, because we have to observe a very, very large number of people, people lots of people have stiff neck and there is also an amount of subjectivity involved in stiff neck. Okay. So, uh, stiff neck e sometimes is a feeling rather than a measurable medical condition, whereas meningitis he has very definite tests and through that one can establish that the person has meningitis. Okay. So, P m given s uh, necessarily has to be computed from a sample and can we take this probability to the whole general population? Can we say that this probability holds over the whole general population? Our confidence in that is not likely to be as high as our confidence is probability of stiff neck given meningitis and this probability is more likely to hold over the whole population. Of course, here we are making some statements which are actually to be established much more rigorously through what is called the test of significance. In the course, we would like to discuss the standard techniques for test of significance later. Okay. So, uh, so this is the point uh, we have to see which uh, direction of probability is convenient for us. So, now we proceed and go to five problems in natural language processing whose probabilistic formulation makes use of Bayesian theorem. And as we discuss the problems, we would also like to see if Bayesian theorem, application of Bayesian theorem is a good idea in this case. Should we apply Bayesian theorem? Okay. So, let us discuss these problems. The problems which are taken up are part of speech tagging, 
Uh, we will discuss this in much more detail in subsequent classes statistical spell checking, automatic speech recognition, probabilistic parsing and statistical machine translation. On the face of it, it might seem these problems are very disparate. We do not see much similarity between two problems. Okay. What is the similarity between speech, part of speech tagging and uh, spell checking or part of speech tagging and automatic speech recognition? Okay, or even probabilistic parsing and statistical spell checking. What is common between them? How is statistical machine translation similar to let us say statistical spell checking? Okay. So, this question arises. What we will see is that all, all these problems are actually some form of sequence labeling problem. Okay. And in all cases, we have a linear sequence of items which need to be given labels and when we give labels we would like to do this statistically and this statistical process is essentially an application of Bayesian theorem as we will see. And in all cases we produce the best possible tag sequence or best possible label sequence given the linear sequence of tokens or items. Okay. Let us see what is the problem of this arg max based computation. There are some insightful general observations. So, we are interested in A star, okay, where uh, A star is obtained by an arg max computation on P A given B over all possible A's. So, we find out the best possible a a star okay given the arg max through the arg max computation of p a given b we uh, may apply bayes theorem here which uh, makes it p a into p b given a one might wonder what happened to the denominator because this whole thing is divided by p b Notice that the arc max is computed over different values of A. The value of P B does not influence this arc max decision in any way. Therefore, P B can be dropped from the computation. Okay. So, to find out A star, we can find it out through the product of P A and P B given A and an arc max computation on this quantity. So, computing and using P A and P B given A both need looking at the internal structures of A and B, because these A, B these are long sequences and they have to be computed by dividing, dividing them into small parts. So, this means we need to look at the internal structures of A and B. We have to make convenient and judicious independence assumptions and we finally, have to put together a computation from smaller parts. So, let me just repeat these three points which is at the heart of statistical natural language processing arg max based computation. We have to compute the, we have to look at the internal structure of A and B, we have to make independence assumptions and finally, we have to put together a computation from smaller parts. So, let us remember these three very, very fundamental points about arg max computation. We move on to pause tagging. The task of pause tagging is exemplified by a sentence here. The national committee remarked on a number of other issues. Okay. The national committee remarked on a number of other issues. When we tag the sentence, we obtain the following sequence. The is a determiner. So, is given the label D E T. National committee here, national is a qualifier for the noun committee and this is an adjective. Therefore, national is given the level A D J adjective. Committee is a noun. So, it is given the level N O U. This forward slash followed by three characters is the label which is given on the entity in the sentence. Remarked. Remarked is nothing but a verb. So, slash 
V R B on is a preposition therefore, P R P A is again a determinant. So, D E T number number is a noun on a number of issues. So, number is noun N O U of is again a preposition P R P other is an adjective. So, A D J and issues is a noun N O U noun. Okay. So, see how the whole sentence the national committee remarked on a number of other issues has been labeled with post tags like D E T, A D J, N O U, etcetera, etcetera. So, let me uh, point to you the fact that these uh, tags have been found through the properties of these words and their function in the sentence and the relationship with respect to each other. Okay. So, committee is definitely a noun, national is an adjective, but there are cases where adjectives function as noun okay. and therefore, disambiguating between adjective and noun deciding whether this particular entity should have be an adjective or noun requires disambiguation. Okay. So, all these labels which are placed here they are nothing but the part of speech tags and they need to be computed with accuracy. How do we form this problem as a sequence labeling problem through an arg max based computation? So, we say that we are interested in the best possible tag sequence T star. Okay. This, those are tags, noun, adjective, etcetera tags. So, so, T star is the best possible tag sequence and that is found by an arc max computation on probability of t given w over all possible t, arc max p t given w over all possible t. So, this whole thing can become, uh, this whole thing can be uh, converted to a set of probabilities of this form and I am not discussing the independence assumptions etcetera here because this is a subsequent discussion in, in a later class, in later one or two classes. So, T star can be found as the product of P T i given T i minus 1 and T i minus 2 into P w i given T i, i going from 1 to n plus 1. So, let us not worry about the nitty gritties here except to say that uh, these uh, uh, probabilities P w i given T i is nothing but probability of a word w at a position i given that the tag at that position is T okay, T i. Similarly, this is this first probability probability of T i given that the tags at previous two positions are T i minus 1 and T i minus 2. So, this probability is a conditional probability which is like a combination of three things. So, T i, T i minus 1, T i minus 2, a tag, the previous tag and previous to previous tag. So, this whole combination of three things, a sequence of three things is known as the trigram. Okay, trigram. So, we are computing the probability of a trigram because this whole thing P T i given T i minus 1 comma T i minus 2 is nothing but probability of T i T i minus 1 T i minus 2 divided by probability of T i minus 1 T i minus 2. So, a trigram probability divided by the bigram probability. How we arrive at this formulation? Let us hold it back for some time until a later class. Okay. So, now we see that this whole sequence labeling problem in the form of a tag sequence for a word sequence has been converted to an argmax based computation. The question that we ask is uh, are we applying the Bayes theorem here? Yes, because after Bayes theorem application, 
this probability p t given w actually becomes p t which is nothing but the probability of the tag sequence prior probability of the tag sequence into probability of w given t. Probability of w can be ignored because the arg max is on t. Okay. So, we have applied Bayes theorem and the question we are asking is, is Bayes theorem really necessary to be applied here. Okay. So, we will do a bit of writing on this to understand this issue. So, you can see the writing and, uh, and see that T star which is nothing but arg max T P T given W okay, is converted to arg max T P T into P W given T. Okay. Uh, P W can be ignored. Okay. Now, the question is can not we work only with P T given W okay, and uh, not apply Bayes theorem and work with P T into P W given T. The reason why we have applied Bayes theorem and we have converted the probability into a product of these two probabilities is that we get valuable information from the prior probability p t from the prior probability p t. Okay. It is as follows this p t is equal to prior probability of tag sequence t. So, how probable is this tag sequence t? So, we are essentially trying to take advantage of more frequent tag sequences. Okay. To take an example, Suppose we have A D J, A D J and noun sequence. So, look at this sequence adjective, adjective, noun sequence. An example of that would be, okay, let me take a determiner also. So, determiner A D J, A D J noun. So, an example of that would be the pink round ball. Okay, the pink round ball. So, these kind of sentences, this kind of sequences of tags is this sequence of tags is very, very common determinant a string of adjectives and then a noun. This is very, very common. This is more common for example, than a sequence like D E T A D J A D V and a noun. I think you will find it very difficult to get a tag sequence such that you have a determiner, the adjective, then an adverb and then a noun. Okay. So, this is very unlikely because the adverb typically comes before an adjective and that too in a very, very restricted way. You can have for example, very good. Okay good very is unlikely. So, an adverb qualifies either a verb or an adjective. So, in English since the qualifier typically comes a modifier typically comes before the modified adverb following an adjective is a very unlikely sequence and then if a noun is coming after that that makes it all the more unlikely. Okay. So, adverb coming before a verb is more likely, adverb coming before a noun is much less likely. He quickly drove, he quickly drove away. Okay. So, quickly drove or quickly drove away, here is an example that is an example of adverb coming before a verb. Adverb coming before noun 
is not so common and it is still still much much less common to have an adverb flanked by an adjective and noun on two sides. I do not think you can uh, find any example easily. Okay. So, this sequence is common, this sequence is not so common. So, when we do the computation and produce the tag sequence by means of a computation by means of the argmax computation, then what we find is that some sequences are more likely than others and the p t value which comes argmax p t p w given t the p t value which comes that can act as a filter for bad tags. Okay. It can act as a filter for bad tags. So, I think now the motivation for applying the Bayes theorem is quite clear. Okay. We would like to uh, catch those tag sequences which are unlikely okay. and that is made very, very explicit by means of a prior probability component in the computation, prior probability component in the form of p t and this p t is very low. Okay. This p t is very low for unlikely tag sequences and that will make the t star for uh, unlikely tag sequences uh, not obtainable through the argmax computation. Okay. So, let us remember this example that we apply Bayes theorem to take advantage of prior probability. Okay. So, let me write it down as an important principle in Bayesian theorem application. Apply Bayes theorem to take advantage of prior probability. Okay. So, if you are applying Bayes theorem, then the prior probability gets separated from the rest of the formulation, it becomes explicit and one can make use of this as a filter. So, let me write this important statement also prior probability acts as a filter. Okay. This is such a common idea and such a useful idea that it uh, finds uh, its appearance in a number of NLP statistical NLP situations, the prior, prior probability being explicitly available through Bayes theorem makes some sequences which are unlikely highly less probable. Okay? That is the reason why Bayes theorem is used. In the next lecture, we will see uh, more examples of this where Bayes theorem is used making explicit the prior probability and making its use and uh, explicit for filter.